a jazz age saga of youth, ambition, and love. When dreams were as cheap as bathtub gin, and the 20s were set to roar. I love it. I am more. the war to end all wars and came home expecting the party to end all parties Chickens? No, sir. Pigeons, sir. Gonna cook them up? No, sir. Come on, we'll get a fire going. We'll roast them on a the spit. They're pigeons, sir. You can't eat them. You got any cigars? No, sir. What the hell kind of soldier are you, anyway? You come all the way out of here, you got no cigars, you got pigeons instead of chickens. They're, they're messenger Vision, sir. We're sending messages back to headquarters. Messages? You think they read messages at headquarters? Nah, they're too busy stuffing their fat faces with chicken! So what's your excuse? Sir? Come on, you're five miles behind the lines going backwards, buddy. I'm running away, sir. I'm scared, sir. Tell them your pigeons escaped and you're chasing them. I don't know. Tell them, uh, tell them anything. Just don't tell them you're running away. You know what deserters get for breakfast. I was on a sapping party. I hit something in the mud with my shovel. I thought it was a root. So, so I, I kept hacking at it. Hacking at it. And then I saw it, it was a man's... Hey. How long have you been out here? Three weeks. You're gonna see a lot worse than that. But it, it was a... Look, swallow it, all right? I don't want to hear this. The uplifting entertainment is in the next barn. Sorry, sir. But quit calling me sir. I'm a sergeant. You don't know what it's like, sergeant. 
I saw your box. Yeah. Yeah, in, in reserve camp. I saw you kale that big lumberjack. Yeah. The guy was more squeaked than wool. A week in a bread basket. I want a dollar on you. A dollar? Hey! Let me... you could have done is give me a blighty one, kid. Could have used a couple weeks in London. Especially after you insult me by only betting a dollar on me. So, yeah. Good like uh, new. Uh, merci. Who's the best? Pound for pound. Ah, uh, Stanley Ketchell, no contest. Ketchell? L'assassin de Michigan! He's dead. Yeah. In the cape with two brides. Two. Shot by a jealous husband. I mean, if you gotta cash him in, that's the way to go, huh? Ketchell style. Uh, avec deux? <laughs> Le sandwich! <laughs> ah, I like Dempsey. You ever seen him fight? Me? I live on a farm in Picton. Farthest from home I'd ever been was Kingston. Until I signed up. Listen, we'll go. You and me. First fight Dempsey has after the war. Sure. No, I mean it. New York, Chicago, wherever it is. Well, I can't afford something like that. Man, it'll be on me. I always lay my hand on a few bucks. Deal? Deal? Careful! Hang on to him for God's sake! Tell the sergeant that I want to see him. He's not here, sir. Well, where is he? I think the captain sent him on a mission, sir. A mission? What the hell are you talking about? To headquarters, sir. Well, you send someone to find him, and you get him in here. Now! Yes, sir. There's this girl. Penny Rhodes. I've been in love with her ever since I can remember. I watched her from a distance. I dreamed about her. I poured out my heart to her. In my mind. But I never got up the nerve to speak to her. Not once. Then one day I saw her on the street. She called to me. 
Couldn't believe it. I didn't even think she knew I existed. She walked towards me, sunlight in her hair. Got something for you. She said, my heart was pounding. I could smell her perfume. She leaned over and she whispered in my ear, Howard? Howard? I said, no, no, it's Billy. And then she was shouting it. Again and again, for everybody to hear. Coward, coward. She shoved a white feather into my hand. I couldn't move. I, I just stood there on the street. And the next day I signed up. Well, at least she broke the ice between you. Thing is, she was right. No, God damn it. She wasn't right. You're no coward. You're just dumb scared, like me. Like anybody out here with half a brain in their head. Now listen, if you have any trouble when you get back to your company, I want you to give this to your sergeant. It says I uh, commandeered you to help with a wounded man. It says you did your duty courageously. It says you deserve a medal. Now listen to me, Billy. You're gonna be okay. You are going to get through this, right? Right? I think I'd miss the party, did you, boys? Been asking for you, Sarge. Captain wants to see me, sir. Is that yours? Very nice. Congrats. Is the captain here, sir? I'm putting you on charge, Sergeant. Desertion in the face of... I've been right here, sir. At the runs. Stuck in a crapper. They probably didn't teach you about that at McGill, sir. Desertion in the face of the enemy. I'll talk to the captain about that, sir. You'll talk to your court-martial about it, sergeant. The captain's dead. I'm commanding this company. You're finished, Kincaid. You're a dead man. But I'll give you one chance to duck the firing squad. We're going over in 18 minutes. You can lead your platoon. 
You afraid they won't follow you, sir? something much more than take a few miserable acres of godforsaken ground. You've created something hard and true and lasting. You're the Canadians. You've taken Bimé. And when future generations look back and ask where Canada was truly born, the answer will come loud and clear. Here by God, in muddy glory, at Eep and the Somme and Vimmer Ridge. For my father, our king, and for my country, I thank you. For myself, I envy you. Displaying exemplary bravery and singular initiative in the face of the enemy during an attack in the Vimy sector, April 9, 1917. He dragged his fallen commanding officer to safety under withering enemy fire. He then rallied his men and led a daringly successful raid against an enemy machine gun nest, being wounded himself in the action. For most conspicuous valor and devotion to duty, Lieutenant John Jedediah Kincaid, 14th Canadian Infantry Battalion. Well done, Lieutenant. You're a credit to your country. Thank you, Prince. Sir, so are you. <laughs> what part of Canada are you from? Montreal, sir. It's in Quebec. Yes. You mentioned you were from Montreal, Captain. Did you two know one another back home? Uh, no, sir. Uh, there's Montreal, sir, and then there's Montreal. His is a little further up the hill than mine. I'd like to see them, both of them, once we get this business out of the way. How's your CO? The one you saved? Did he come through all right? That was me, sir. You know, Lieutenant, they say that if you save a man's life, he becomes your responsibility. Forever. Work with your highness. I saved his life. He saved my ass. <laughs> <laughs> another word from you, man. Not a sound. Understood? Squad! Halt! Left! Turn! They were with me. They were 
part of my stuff. Disturbance there, Captain. Uh, man six, sir. Everything's under control, sir. Pay attention to the proceedings of General Court Martial of Private William Wheeler, 14th Battalion, charged with desertion. Accused was found guilty and sentenced to death by being shot. Sentence was carried out 6:03 a.m. October 20th, 1917. Huh. Sergeant, march the company off. Sir. Number two company, into file, left turn. Quick march. You shouldn't have stopped me. You wouldn't have accomplished anything. All you would have done is got yourself in trouble. Uh, that's your motto, isn't it, Blaine? Huh? Huh? We'll just stay out of trouble. And before you know it, we'll all be back with our own kind playing polo again. I went and woke up the colonel in the middle of the night to plead for the boy's life. The orders came down from Curry himself. He thinks the discipline is getting lax. The men needed a good, strong reminder that the war is far from over. And that's what that was. A reminder? Come on, let's go. A reminder? Where the hell do you think you're going? You're going to see Curry. Is that what you think you're doing? OK. OK, go ahead. Barge in there. You take a swing at him. If you're lucky, they'll give you 10 years. God damn it, Kincaid, I'm ordering you to halt. Listen, forget about it. It's not your problem. You idiot. You saved my life, and I care about what happens to you. You'll get over it. Curry! You hear me? <clears throat> What? Private. So that's your plan. Would you rather hear something white? The maple leaf or emblem deer? Oh, no, I like it. What is it? 
That's jazz, buddy. The bugle blues. So what are you in here for? Took a shot at Fritz. Isn't that the general idea? For you, not for us. We're here to dig trenches for you white boys. Can't go giving no darky, no gun, no telling what he might do with it. That's true. <laughs> so anyway, we out there, digging away. Fritz using us for target practice as usual. Got my pal, right here, just like that. So I grabbed me one of them Lee Enfields, took a couple of pops right back at him, bam, bam. Want to lock you up for that? A Sarge happened to be holding that particular rifle at the time. White Sarge. Anyways, he was complaining. I gonna live longer in here than out there fighting Fritz with a shovel. Who knows? If they forget about me long enough, I might even make it back to Halifax. Get me a job in the Transcontinental. <laughs> me being a war hero and all. Excuse us, please. This is Wheeler's. He asked that you get it. I don't want it. I'm sorry. I didn't know that he was a friend of yours. He wasn't. Fiverr says you can't find her. Free to go. There's been no report made on any of this. Oh, hey, listen. I'm perfectly happy to sit the war out right here. But why don't you uh, charge me with striking a superior officer or something? I would, Lieutenant, but you didn't lay a glove on me. <laughs> hey, McGill. Where'd you learn how to box? Oh, on the polo ground. Where else? So long, buddy. Listen, look me up in Montreal when your train comes through. Well, I'm serious. My name's Jake Kincaid. I'm sorry, I'm uh, fresh out of business cards. I gave my last one to General Haig. William W. Williams, sir. What's a W for? Nothing. I just kind of stuck her in there for a breather from all them Williams, sir. <laughs> Master of this war. No glimmer seen of God's hand. The sunrise a blasphemous mockery. Only the black rain from bruised and swollen clouds. The black rain and the shells which never cease. Plunging, maiming. Sarge! I mean, 
sir! I mean Mon General! to the brothel. It's a two-hour way. Hey, remember that one you took us to in Paris, Sarge? Oh, wash me in the water, let you wash your dirty daughter in the dark. winding into the land of my dreams where the nightingales are singing the white moon beams. There's a long, long night of waiting until my dreams all come true. Till the day that I'll be going down that long, long trail with you. There's a long, long trail of winding into the land of my dreams, where the nightingales are singing and the white moon beams. There's a long, long night of waiting until my dreams all come true. Godforsaken thing will ever end? Yeah. There's only one more verse. Join the parade? Parade. Ah, oh, this is just the families. They tell me that half of Montreal is out there waiting for us. Yeah, your half. But at least come and meet my mother, like my fiance. Why? Well, they've heard about you. I've mentioned you in my letters. The war is over, Blaine. But well, I hope we'll still see each other from time to time. You'll get over it. Hey, that's 
go boxing sometime. New cap can't shine to shine. Listen, I had mud on my boots for four and a half years. From now on, I want to see my face in them every day. Four hundred and twenty dollars. Thirty-five dollar clothing voucher. Good as your favorite haberdasher. That's it. No. Good luck. That's it. Sign over there. The king. The king. The king. And his bravest soldier. Welcome home, Christopher. Oh, there were lots braver, Mr. Ashley. I tell you, this is the land of opportunity. This city is positively inspiring. You know what it makes me feel like? Like, uh, old Mike Angelo, when he first saw that blank ceiling. Give me a brush. I feel a cherub coming on. <laughs> Dealer bets a sabak. I feel a cherub coming on. <laughs> I love it. I amour it. Christopher, when are you going to plunge in? Sir? At the firm. Uh, uh, I've, um, I've decided against that, sir. Who's been whispering in your ear? Kill him? Green shields? Match any offer, Chris? Uh, no, it's, it's not a matter of another offer, sir. I've decided not to join any firm, uh, for the moment. I, I thought I might take a look around and, uh, Try to find something a little more, well, meaningful. <laughs> I don't want to sound alarmist, but if you young men who have come through safely don't pick up the torch for your generation, then the very fabric of our society here in Canada is threatened. I I'm sorry, sir, but it's impossible to spend four years in the trenches and come out with the idea that a bunch of brokers and Bond salesmen are the fabric of society. <laughs> anyway, if I were going to go into finance, well, I imagine I'd join my father's bank. That's um, somewhat of an unfortunate situation, Chris. You may not be aware of all the problems they've had. What problems? But I shouldn't have brought this up on your first night home. You need some time. I know what you've been through. How, sir? Read him and weep. Land of opportunity. with an idea for the out of body scene. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Chris Blaine. Everybody. Hi. We met before, I think, at the uh, Pirandello. That wasn't Chris. Come and hear our idea. <laughs> I think. <laughs> 
swing. Block a hook. Tell me. Next stop, Broadway. Here, here. A great trade way. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Everyone here is a writer or a red. Or an actor. Uh, I knew there must be a reason why I felt so much at home. What do you think of Lucy Stone League? I've, I've never heard of that. It's the movement to let girls keep their own names after they get married. Where have you been? Uh, away. Are you Paula's latest? Latest? Oh, she's a professional bow catcher, that one. Uh, we're engaged. Congratulations. Can you do the shimmy? Somehow I doubt it. funeral son didn't spare a dime listen let me pay you for it okay we owe you for it i'm a little short right now i don't want your money didn't the army give you nothing when you checked out oh yeah they give you 420 bucks a pat on the ass and i already invested part of that invested how much 420. Hey, but I still got the pat on the ass. No, you Cleared out your mother's place myself, Johnny. Packed up all her stuff. It's not a whole hell of a lot to show for a life, is it? Must be over 500 bucks in here. Where the hell did you get this? That's the money you sent home to her. She wouldn't spend a penny of it. It was for her. I wanted her. 
I wanted her to spend it on herself. Next week on Chasing Rainbows. I understand. But I'm not dead. I'm still here. The torch is passed. You don't understand, Christopher. Your father lost everything. I mean, isn't it obvious to a smart college boy like yourself that we got exactly nothing in common anymore? You can't get mixed up in this. Smuggling. You offering me something better? I knew a number like you in France. She was so snooty, she'd only date the 42nd Battalion. That's very good. Thank you.